Hello everyone, welcome to CH4511 Organic One Lab. This will be the experiment video for bromination of triphenylmethane using NBS. Alright, uh, in I just love saying that word. Anyway, so, <clears throat> um, uh, what we'll be doing today is a radical reaction right, um, using NBS as our bromine source. Right, uh, which will then, bromine will then become radicalized uh, just via ambient light. Um, and so that's why it's very important that the round bottom flask we use is clear, not covered with aluminum foil, um, anything like that. All right, and so as we see, they uh, TAs have got a round bottom flask. They are weighing out a mass of triphenylmethane, our starting reagent. And uh, per the instructions or the procedure, we want to measure out approximately one gram of triphenylmethane. And you will see in just a second the actual mass that was used popped up. All right, 1.0143 grams. All right, and now they're putting that triphenylmethane into uh, the round bottom flask. Next up, uh, going to acquire a mass for inbromosuconamide. All right, the mass that they're going to finally get is going to be 0 0.7320 grams. All right, so they have put the NBS and the triphenylmethane with 15 milliliters of DCM in the round bottom flask. And so now they have already, they didn't show the setup, but um, they've put together the um, refluxing uh, glassware apparatus that is uh, in the procedure. All right, and uh, one thing you may have noticed in the beginning of this reflux clip to now, it's already went from clear to yellow. Um, and you want to do that. You want to reflux for uh, approximately 30 minutes. And so what should happen is that that the color of our solution is going to get darker and darker until eventually uh, we see kind of an, a deep orange or even red color. All right. So I just sped this up. So you're actually seeing this clip sped up about four times the normal speed. <clears throat> All right, so now they're removing the reaction mixture. You can see that nice red tint. Um, and they're going to allow it to cool to room temperature. Before they do anything else with that product. Um, but we're going to see um, a hot plate being set up with ethanol so they can, um, or 60, mil, 60 milliliters of 60% ethanol. Um, and so they're going to heat it, um, but they don't want it to boil, right? They just want it to just want to heat it so it'll be hot for later. All right, and so now you can see uh, I'm going to do a separation in the separatory funnel. So they poured in that reaction mixture into the separatory funnel. Uh, they added uh, 2 mils of DCM and 10 milliliters of water. All right, and so they have that organic phase at the bottom, which is orange, and the aqueous phase, which is the top, is in the beaker. All right, they're going to do another wash or another separation. 
um, where they're going to have they showed it yet yeah where they're going to use brine or a saturated sodium chloride solution all right so the organic layers still the orange color all right and they put that brine solution that was on the top uh, in the other beaker in the bigger beaker all right and so now they're going to dry to get it, uh, they're going to use this drying agent sodium sulfate to soak up, absorb any water that uh, could have been retained in that organic layer. Uh, and then once that uh, sodium sulfate has kind of settled and it's all on the bottom, they're going to transfer, they're going to decant um, that organic layer that has the product in it. They're going to decant it and transfer it to a Rotovap round bottom flask. All right, there's the round bottom flask, and they're going to decant it in, and they're going to move on to the Rotovap portion. So now they're going to remove the remaining DCM solvent using the Rotovap. And so you'll see nice fine uh, powder on the inside wall of the round bottom flask. And so now they're going to try and scrape some of this solid off of the inside walls of the round bottom flask. Well, first they're going to use the hot, sorry, the hot ethanol. All right. And they're going to scrape what else is left off the side of the walls as best they can. All right, second addition of hot ethanol. All right, now uh, that our solid that was in the hot ethanol, uh, it's got to be stirred until it's a nice homogeneous mixture, um, or to us all dissolved. So you can kind of see here, yet again, they're back to heating it up a little bit because you want that solid fully dissolved. All right, so anyway, so once I got fully dissolved. They uh, removed it, let it cool to room temperature, and they put it in um, this ice bath. All right, so they're going to recrystallize. So here they're also going to get some absolute ethanol that they're going to chill simultaneously with our um, bromotriphenyl methane product that's in the ethanol. All right, we'll see why this is going to come in later when we use the vacuum fil filtration system.
All right, so showing you that some of that uh, that product solid has fallen out of solution. It's recrystallized. I'm also going to pour some of this ice cold water. Ah, refreshing. Don't drink it. All right, so now they're going to chill that ethanol by itself. All right, right now we're just waiting for the vacuum filtration system to be set up with a Buchner flask and a funnel hooked up to a vacuum or a vacuum pump. All right, um, now they're also going to uh, weigh a watch glass and filter paper. Now, you don't have to record this mass because uh, since they're the only ones in the lab, they're just going to tear that watch glass and filter paper. All right, so now putting in that filter paper into the Buchner funnel. All right, now vacuum pump is on and we're going to filter. Uh, using that cold ethanol, try and grab any of that recrystallized product that's stuck. All right, and so once that vacuum filtration system has ran for a minute or two, maybe five, um, gonna, they pull out the filter paper that has our product on it um, and then put it back on the watch glass and let it heat up on the hot plate, right? but also being careful not to burn anything. Don't, you can burn your filter paper if you crank the heat up too high.
He's so meticulous. All right, heating it up. So we're going to see, uh, this is going to jump in just a second to where, uh, all right, it's now dry. It jumped. All right. And as the little subtitle told us, the brominated product is dry. All right, and then going to take it and weigh it. Now, remember, they had already teared the watch glass and the filter paper. So here's the mass of our product, bromo triphenylmethane, 1.3137 grams. Next up, I'm uh, going to use the Digimelt to get the melting points. All right, and so uh, comparing our starting reactant, triphenylmethane, to our product, the bromo triphenylmethane. All right, so both of them are in there. All right, and so trying to watch as it melts, um, you're going to see what should melt first based off of our melting point. Um, we know the melting point of triphenylmethane. It's somewhere around 92. All right, and so what we can see here, um, our triphenylmethane has melted in the melting range of 91.7 to 93 degrees Celsius. All right, and so you can kind of see some liquidiness to it. All right, there is a pretty bad glare, but... It's a liquid. It has melted uh, our triphenyl methane. All right, and then next up, our bromo triphenyl methane. You can kind of see it starting to. Oh, there it goes it melted. All right, and it's going to melt in the range of 155.6 to 157 degrees Celsius. All right, and that should that should be all the information you need for your lab report. Good luck.